find something of size, and Curtis will know that by looking at the magnetometer spike in the sine wave. Yeah. But it's not going to draw you a picture yeah, unless yeah. it would be laying perfect like yeah. an anchor, you yeah. know, yeah. if it's buried in the sediment. The ship was drifting this way, and they dropped their hook, you know, like as they were they were drifting to, to stop their right. drift up Bellingham Channel. This this portion right in here is what we're thinking. Okay. The, as the most probable area. About 35 years ago, I became aware that Vancouver Expedition had come through here and started studying it and realized that they had lost an anchor here. And I thought that was a really significant event. And thinking, wow, that anchor is still here. You know, 200 years ago, they lost an anchor and it's still here. And I thought to myself, I thought, you know, I'll bet in my lifetime, somebody will actually find that anchor and raise it. And I, I will hope in my lifetime, I'll be able to see that anchor. At first, we should probably look at this area, yeah. south of the line, south and southeast of the line, a little yeah. bit more than, you know, tries to go back. And then if we do a couple of long runs like this, then I suppose we could try to cross hatch it maybe that way yeah. at a 90 degrees to those runs. I don't think we're going to be, gonna be that's a high, high, high probability area, I think, still. I'm well, just thinking of our currents. We probably should be making our tracks go this way. It'll be flooding, yeah. It'll be flooding all morning. We want to get this uh, magnetometer as close to the bottom right. as we can. Uh, we got to make sure we don't... Uh, it get, looks like it could be pretty rugged, right? Yeah. Well, that's yeah. why they yeah. lost the anchor. Exactly. <laughs> we don't, don't want, want to lose the magnet. Exactly. Yeah. Point, so, yeah. Yeah. The first expedition that actually came through here was in 1790, and it was the, um, the Eliza expedition. Um, it generated, of course, a great deal of excitement in the world, and the next year, the Vancouver expedition arrived in 1791 to carry out a complete um, survey of the entire uh, Pacific Northwest all the way to Alaska. Vancouver's flagship was the HMS Discovery, and the uh, tender for it was called the Chatham. They spent the night anchored at the south, uh, southeast corner of, um, of Lopez Island, and then got underway the next morning, and their destination was just to move from Lopez, just across Rosario Street, and anchor in Strawberry Bay on the west side of Cypress Island right here. There, there was very light winds, and they started making their way across Rosario Strait and coming up here towards Cypress Island. But then the tide changed and started flooding and carrying them a little faster than they expected. 
So the Discovery was able to make it around the west side of Cypress Island and get to its anchorage in Strawberry Bay. Uh, but the Chatham got caught by the current and was carried this way up through into the beginning of Bellingham Channel here. And they became concerned that they were going to miss their anchorage. They reported about a five knot current, so it was really carrying them along at a pretty good rate. So they decided they better, they better drop their anchor and stop and wait for the tide. So they dropped their stream anchor, which was a, a smaller anchor that they just used often for anchoring for the day or waiting out a tide. And it, but as soon as it went down and they fetched up on the, on the hawser, the line parted. Well, these are, each one of these lines represents a track that we're taking. Uh, the one that's in pink is the active line. So at this point, basically, I'm looking forward and I'm ranging the land in the background uh, to determine if we're actually turning left or right. This is kind of telling us what we, we just did a few seconds ago. The blue is uh, our boat up here. The arrow of it coming off is uh, our heading. Behind the blue boat, this is what we're towing, and uh, that's the magnetometer there. It's basically like uh, mowing the lawn. You're just going back and forth on each one of these lines, trying to cover all the area. We plot it all up, and then you'll actually see the, the dipoles spurring off from the you know the anchor parts and it, it'll actually almost look like an anchor or you'll be able to you know visualize it once it's all contoured and everything. So does that mean but, that all this the data would have to be you know run through a program to sort of get that readout that will allow you to see that stuff? Yeah. yeah. What mark are we on now? Four, four, I can't so last one was three so three was actually a pretty good one. So what we're looking for in this magnetometer search is a magnetic anomaly in this in the overall ambient magnetic field. And what that's gonna look like is a spike and then a dip, and then it's gonna return to baseline levels. Hey Brian, mark one. So normally we see this kind of noisy data, but you can see the general trend, so we don't think of these as, as anomalies, they're just noise in the data, as long as you can follow that. Once, it, once the data comes to the bottom of this screen, it jumps up here, it's just a scaling issue, but you can see this comes down, spikes way up here, which is up here, and then back down. So we think, you know, that could be an anomaly. 